Hi everyone. So some of you have been asking how I colour my berries using coloured pencils and um, more specifically what kind of reds I use, how do I get that mixed, how do I get the speckled look at the bottom of each berry. So today I'm going to walk you through my personal process of how I go about colouring berries or more specifically these St John's wort, uh, the Tutson St John's wort berries. So they've got this lovely yellow area at the bottom and the red comes down from the top and then they give this, this speckled appearance towards the bottom. So we're going to uh, we're going to do those today. So I will show you all of the tools that I'm using and we'll go through the pencils as we apply them. So first of all, let me tell you, I'm working on Saunders Waterford 300 pounds hot press paper. It's the high white paper, not the normal color. There is a quite a big difference. The normal color is rather creamy. This is the whitest that you can get. Um, and I'm using a piece of tracing paper to cover up my work underneath so that I don't get any smudges or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so let's get, uh, let's get cracking. So for this particular mix, this berry mix, I'm using a mix of Faber-Castell and Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils and one luminance pencil just in the berry mix. I'm not going to do the leaves today. So we'll just be doing one berry. So first of all, I'm using a piece of blue tack. So you can use a putty rubber or a piece of blue tack if you have one. And I lift off the graphite by gently pressing the paper. So I'm not using an eraser. I'm not damaging the tooth of the paper. I'm just lifting the graphite. And that's how faint I like my drawing to be. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the bottom of the berry and work my way up because I want to get my lighter mix on first. It's important to get the yellow high enough underneath the red so that it gives that glow from underneath. So I have an area down here where it's sort of slightly darker. So we're going to start down there. And the first colour I'm using is this one, which is khaki green 016, and that's Caran d'Ache. So with a sharpened pencil. For this area, I'm just going to apply this pencil where the berry sort of cuts in, just to start to give it basic shape and we sort of have two little V's down the bottom here and that's it for that colour. Next I'm going to go with a slightly lighter version which is olive yellow Caran d'Ache And in very small circular motions, I'm going to go around that car key and just put in some shading. Very, very lightly stroking up the side. All the time, I'm only using extremely light pressure, sort of just tickling the paper. And now I'm going into my lightest colour, which is light lemon yellow. And again, I'm using extremely light pressure. And I'm taking this right up into the areas where the red's going to gently come down over it. It's very important 
to not destroy the tooth of the paper for this layer because we're going to need it to get that speckled appearance from the red so I don't saturate the paper and lose the tooth at any time. I just keep applying it really lightly in very small circular motions. It gives a lovely even coverage without saturating. And we're taking it over the khaki and the olive green to make sure that they're blended as well. I must say, the thing I enjoy about coloured pencils is how relaxing it is and there's no clean up, there's no uh, set up time, it's just there waiting to be done. Okay, so for now I'm done with that yellow and I'm going to move on and start applying some of the reds. So I'm going to apply my darkest colour first and I'm going to map in the areas of shade. And my darkest red is Caput Mortum Violet, I hope I'm not uh, destroying that name there. And it's number 263 in Faber-Castell. Faber-Castell Polychromos, that is. So we have an area over here that's uh, slightly darker. And we have a line down here, stroking this ever so lightly across the paper. We have an area of dark coming down the middle there. And again here. And we have an area of shadow over this side. And this is slightly wider. So when I'm making an area darker, like I'm doing here, I prefer to do that by using an, a lot of strokes, a lot of light strokes, as opposed to going in hard with the pencil, which of course damages the paper. It's worth taking your time over. So I've got a highlight here and I've got one here, so I'm just going to gently map those in.
Okay, so those are my darkest areas mapped in. And now I'm going to start layering the reds down. And the first one I'm going to apply is Permanent Carmine, which is 125. So again, really light pressure. And I'm going to, first of all, go over those areas of dark. You may see me constantly turning my pencil and that's because when I turn it I'm going to end up with a sharper side every few seconds so it saves me having to keep sharpen the pencil on, uh, until it's blunt, really blunt. So if you just get used to that sort of movement keep turning it on its side slightly. So now that I've gone over the dark, I'm going to start filling in the rest of the areas. And um, for this, I'm more, I'm stroking as opposed to using the small circles that I used for this section. And all the time I'm just really studying my subject and seeing where the light falls, where the shadows fall and just to make sure that I'm applying in the right place. Okay, so that's that first layer of, um, of permanent carmine. And now I'm going to go back over it again, but I'm going to very slightly increase my pressure now, aside from when I come down to here. And over here, this is where you really, really want to whisper it, and that's what's going to give that speckled appearance. Because the pencil is slightly blunt, it's going to skip over the tooth of the paper and it's going to leave some lovely interesting markings as opposed to an overly smooth finish. So if you can see here we are just tickling the paper And I sort of lift in between each stroke.
and you can see that we're getting that speckled gradient look. So it's very time consuming and you do need a lot of patience for this technique. So if you like quick artwork, this, uh, this may not be the thing for you. But if you really enjoy sort of getting in a zone and losing hours of your life on a drawing, then this is perfect. So that's my second layer of uh, permanent carmine and now I'm moving on to my main body colour which is deep red 223 and again we're stroking and going back over the areas we've already done but we're going to start to get a more saturated finish now because this is sort of four layers This is a lovely true red. And again, down here, bringing it slightly further into the yellow than we did with the last pencil, but still just really just tickling the paper. Hardly any pressure at all. Build up the color in strokes rather than in pressure. we can start to see some form taking place now. Now I'm just sort of working my way back around and re-going over any areas where I 
think there's not enough pigment. Now I'm starting to get little bits of the pencil flake off. So for that, I'm going to use a dusting brush and just flick them off. Never blow because you run the risk of accidentally spitting on your paper and the bits don't tend to sort of come off properly anyway. So I use a brush. I've seen other people use a big feather. Okay, so now before I add my last red, I'm going to go back to that uh, light yellow and I'm going to stroke it up into this area because it didn't quite come up high enough or with enough intensity. So I'm just stroking it back up into here and here. A little bit into here. And over here. Now I don't need to worry about my speckled look sort of vanishing because I can go back in and reapply that again as long as I don't go too hard with the yellow and damage the tooth of the paper. I'm going to give it a wipe again. And now I'm going to take a white uh, using Faber Castell white. Sometimes I use Luminance white. And I'm just going to soften this highlight because this isn't a bright highlight, it's more muted. So, just softening this area here. And just at the bottom of this area, so I'm slightly going into the red there. And again here. Pulling some red, a very light bit of red, into that highlight. And just around the edge. One. Okay, so now I'm going to use Alizar in Crimson, which is number 225. And this has more of a sort of pinky hue to it than the deep red, which was a true, true red. And exactly the same principle, I'm just re-going over what I've already done very lightly, and I'm actually taking that up and over that white to give it more of a pinky look. So again, just really tickling that paper. And down into the yellow. To 
give that speckled appearance. And with this layer, I'm just sort of darkening up areas and building up saturation. And we'll give it a brush. Okay, now I'm going to really give that pencil a needle sharp point so I can go around the outlines. And to do that, I use one of these to really sharpen my pencils up. I'm not gonna do it over my work because it may create a great big mess, but I hold the pencil parallel to the sandpaper and go up and down whilst turning it to give a really, really sharp point. So now that I've sharpened that, if you look at both of these, you can see the difference between one that's been sharpened by the pencil sharpener and one that's been sharpened with the sandpaper. And that is such a lovely point. So we can very carefully go around that edge and make sure it's all nice and crisp. This is the point where you hold your breath. And again, I still turn my pencil. Because as much as Faber-Castell does retain a good point, they do wear down quick. Okay, so I've got my sharp edge. So now I'm going to just take a look, see if I need to deepen any areas up. And I'd like to just deepen up a couple of the shadows. So I'm going back to that 263. And just lightly adding a bit more depth over here. Being most careful when I come to the bottom and around here.
and because I've gone back in with the dark I need to layer it again so I'm going back in with the deep red which is my main body colour and just blending that in and adding any more pigment where I feel it may be lacking. over here I'm using a slightly heavier hand aside from when I get down to the bottom. Okay, and now, because I have a light shining on my paper, I so to stand up and take a good look at it and make sure that I'm happy with it. Brush off any, any uh, fallen pigment. And then I'm just going to lightly take that white And go over that area again. Go back to my yellow. And just go back over the very bottom where that khaki green is. Because later on when I add the leaves, there will be a darker colour going into this. So this is just sort of a marker, so as I know where to go. And then this is just time to fix up any little bits and pieces. So I can see an area here where it needs to be slightly darker on the edge. So I'm just taking the deep red and working a bit more pigment in. And you can see how the yellow underneath gives it that lovely glow because it's coming through. Okay, and so to finish off, I'm just going to add the little stalk at the top there. And for that, I'm using Van Dyke Brown and that's 176. Again, this has a very sharp point. Um, and we're just gonna pop in that little stalk. Now this little stalk isn't an interesting one. I like the ones where they have little loops coming off and stuff, but this one's actually 
quite a blunt one. So I've just added in the shape. It's darker at the base. And there we have it. So that's this little berry virtually finished. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like more, then please do let me know. And I'm always happy to make more videos for you. So if you have any questions or comments, then also please let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to answer. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.